a doctor of philosophy degree or a doctorate of philosophy, from the Latin doctor philosophia, is a type of doctorate awarded by universities in many countries. The degree varies considerably according to the country, institution, and time period, from entry-level research degrees to higher doctorates. A person who attains a doctorate of philosophy is automatically awarded the academic title of doctor. During the studies that lead to the degree, the student is called doctoral student or PhD student. In the context of academic degrees, the term philosophy does not refer solely to the field of philosophy, but is used in a broader sense in accordance with its original Greek meaning, which is love of wisdom. In most of Europe, all fields other than theology, law, and medicine were traditionally known as philosophy, and in Germany and elsewhere in Europe, the basic faculty of liberal arts was known as the faculty of philosophy. History in the universities of medieval Europe, study was organized in four faculties, the basic faculty of arts, and the three higher faculties of theology, medicine, and law. All of these faculties awarded intermediate degrees and final degrees. Initially, the titles of master and doctor were used interchangeably for the final degrees. But by the late Middle Ages the terms Master of Arts and Doctor of Theology, Divinity, Doctor of Law, and Doctor of Medicine had become standard in most places. The doctorates in the higher faculties were quite different from the current Ph.D. degree in that they were awarded for advanced scholarship, not original research. No dissertation or original work was required, only lengthy residency requirements and examinations. Besides these degrees, there was the licentiate. Originally this was a license to teach, awarded shortly before the award of the master or doctor degree by the diocese in which the university was located. But later it evolved into an academic degree in its own right, in particular in the continental universities. So in theory the full course of studies might lead in succession to the degrees of e.g. Bachelor of Arts, Licentiate of Arts, Master of Arts, Bachelor of Medicine, Licentiate of Medicine, Doctor of Medicine. There were many exceptions to this, however, most students left the university before becoming Masters of Arts, whereas regulars could skip the arts faculty entirely. Educational reforms in Germany This situation changed in the early 19th century through the educational reforms in Germany, most strongly embodied in the model of the University of Berlin, founded and controlled by the Prussian government in 1810. The arts faculty, which in Germany was labeled the Faculty of Philosophy, started demanding contributions to research, attested by a dissertation, for the award of their final degree, which was labeled Doctor of Philosophy. Originally this was just the German equivalent of the Master of Arts degree, whereas in the Middle Ages the arts faculty had a set curriculum, based upon the trivium and the quadrivium. By the 19th century it had come to house all the courses of study in subjects now commonly referred to as sciences and humanities. Professors across the humanities and sciences focused on their advanced research. Practically all the funding came from the central government, and could be cut off if the professor was politically unacceptable. These reforms proved extremely successful, and fairly quickly the German universities started attracting foreign students, notably from the United States. The American students would go to Germany to obtain a Ph.D. after having studied for a bachelor's degrees at an American college. So influential was this practice that it was imported to the United States, where in 1861 Yale University started granting the Ph.D. degree to younger students who, after having obtained the bachelor's degree, had completed a prescribed course of graduate study and successfully defended a thesis or dissertation containing original research in science or in a humanities. This research degree of Doctor of Philosophy was the first to be given in North America, even though in Germany the name of the doctorate was adapted accordingly after the philosophy faculty started being split up minus e.g. Doctor, R.E.R., Nat. 
for doctorates in the Faculty of Natural Sciences minus in most of the English-speaking world the name of Doctor of Philosophy was retained for research, doctorates in all disciplines. The doctorate in the United Kingdom the PhD degree spread to Canada in 1900, and then to Great Britain in 1917. In particular in the English universities the introduction of the research doctorate largely happened to compete with Germany for American students. But the initiative was first halted by internal criticism. In first instance, in particular at the University of London, the degrees of Doctor of Science and Doctor of Literature were introduced, which could be awarded upon presentation of a thesis containing original work. This involved no research training however, and did not have the desired effect of attracting foreign research students. Finally in 1917 the current degree of Ph.D. was introduced along the lines of the American and German model and quickly became popular with both British and foreign students. The slightly older degrees of Doctor of Science and Doctor of Literature letters still exist in British universities, together with the much older degrees of Doctor of Divinity, Doctor of Music, Doctor of Civil Law and Doctor of Medicine they form the higher doctorates. But apart from honorary degrees they are only infrequently awarded. It should be noted that in the English universities the Faculty of Arts had become dominant by the early 19th century. Indeed, the higher faculties had largely atrophied, since medical training had shifted to teaching hospitals. The legal training for the common law system was provided by the Inns of Court, and few students undertook formal study in theology. This is contrast with the situation in the continental European universities at the time, where the preparatory role of the Faculty of Philosophy or Arts was to a great extent taken over by secondary education, as is testified by the ongoing use to this day of the degree of baccalaureate in France as the qualification obtained after secondary studies. The reforms at the Humboldt University transformed the Faculty of Philosophy or Arts from a lower faculty into one on par with the faculties of Law and Medicine. A similar evolution happened in many other continental European universities, and at least until reforms in the early 21st century many European countries had in all faculties triple degree structures of Bachelor minus Licentiate minus doctor as opposed to bachelor minus master minus doctor. The meaning of the different degrees varied a lot from country to country however. To this day this is also still the case for the pontifical degrees in theology and canon law. For instance, in sacred theology the degrees of bachelor of sacred theology, licentiate of sacred theology, and doctor of sacred theology, and in canon law. Bachelor of Canon Law, Licentiate of Canon Law, and Doctor of Canon Law. The doctorate in the United States until the mid-19th century, advanced degrees were not a criterion for professorships at most colleges. That began to change as the more ambitious scholars at major schools went to Germany for one to three years to obtain a PhD in the sciences or humanities. Graduate schools slowly emerged in the United States. In 1861, Yale awarded the first three PhDs in North America to Eugene Schuyler, Arthur Williams Wright, and James Morris Witten. In the next two decades, NYU, the University of Pennsylvania, Harvard, and Princeton also began granting the degree. Major shifts toward graduate education were foretold by the opening of Clark University in 1887, which only offered graduate programs, and the Johns Hopkins University which focused on its Ph.D. program. By the 1890s, Harvard, Columbia, Michigan and Wisconsin were building major graduate programs, whose alumni were hired by new research universities. By 1900, 300 PhDs were awarded annually, most of them by six universities. It was no longer necessary to study in Germany. In Germany, the national government funded the universities and the research programs of the leading professors. It was impossible for professors who were not approved by Berlin to train graduate students. 
In the United States, by contrast, private universities and state universities alike were independent of the federal government. Independence was high, but funding was low. The breakthrough came from private foundations, which began regularly supporting research in science and history. Large corporations sometimes supported engineering programs. The postdoctoral fellowship was established by the Rockefeller Foundation in 1919. Meanwhile, the leading universities, in cooperation with the learned societies, set up a network of scholarly journals. Publish or perish became the formula for faculty advancement in the research universities. After World War II, state universities across the country expanded greatly in undergraduate enrollment and eagerly added research programs leading to master's or doctorate degrees. Their graduate faculties had to have a suitable record of publication and research grants. Late in the 20th century, publish or perish became increasingly important in colleges and smaller universities. Requirements Detailed requirements for the award of a Ph.D. degree vary throughout the world and even from school to school. It is usually required for the student to hold an honors degree or a master's degree with high academic standing in order to be considered for a Ph.D. program. In the U.S., Canada, India and Denmark, for example, many universities require coursework in addition to research for Ph.D. degrees. In other countries there is generally no such condition, though this varies by university and field. Some individual universities or departments specify additional requirements for students not already in possession of a bachelor's degree or equivalent or higher. In order to submit a successful Ph.D. admission application, copies of academic transcripts, letters of recommendation, a research proposal and a personal statement are often required. Most universities also invite for a special interview before admission. A candidate must submit a project or thesis or dissertation often consisting of a body of original academic research, which is in principle worthy of publication in a peer-reviewed context. In many countries a candidate must defend this work before a panel of expert examiners appointed by the university. In other countries, the dissertation is examined by a panel of expert examiners who stipulate whether the dissertation is in principle passable and any issues that need to be addressed before the dissertation can be passed. Some universities in the non-English speaking world have begun adopting similar standards to those of the Anglophone PhD degree for their research doctorates. A Ph.D. student or candidate is conventionally required to study on campus under close supervision. With the popularity of distance education and e-learning technologies, some universities now accept students enrolled into a distance education part-time mode. In a sandwich Ph.D. program, Ph.D. candidates do not spend their entire study period at the same university. Instead, the Ph.D. candidates spend the first and last periods of the program at their home universities, and in between conduct research at another institution or field research. Occasionally a sandwich Ph.D. will be awarded by two universities. Value and Criticism Ph.D. Students are often motivated to pursue the Ph.D. by scientific and humanistic curiosity, the desire to contribute to the academic community, service to others, or personal development. A career in academia generally requires a Ph.D., though in some countries, it is possible to reach relatively high positions without a doctorate. In North America, professors are increasingly being required to have a Ph.D. because the percentage of faculty with a Ph.D. is used as a university ratings measure. The motivation may also include increased salary, but in many cases this is not the result. Research by Casey suggests that overall subjects, Ph.D.s, provide an earnings premium of 26%. 
but notes that master's degrees provide a premium of 23% already. While this is a small return to the individual, he claims there are significant benefits to society for the extra research training. However, some research suggests that overqualified workers are often less satisfied and less productive at their jobs. These difficulties are increasingly being felt by graduates of professional degrees, such as law school, looking to find employment. Ph.D. Students often have to take on debt to undertake their degree. A Ph.D. is also required in some positions outside academia, such as research jobs in major international agencies. In some cases, the executive directors of some types of foundations may be expected to hold a Ph.D. In the article, The Peril of Credential Creep in Foreign Policy, it is stated that M. or and more foreign policy professionals are required to hold master's or Ph.D. degrees to compete in the field. The article states that, if having a master's degree at the minimum is de rigueur in Washington's foreign policy world, it is no wonder many are starting to feel that the Ph.D. is a necessary escalation. Another case of costly signalling to potential employers, an article on the Australian Public Service states that credentialism in the public service is seeing a dramatic increase in the number of graduate positions going to PhDs and master's degrees are becoming the base entry level. Qualification The Economist published an article citing various criticisms against the state of PhDs. Richard B. Freeman explains that, based on pre-2000 data, at most only 20% of life science PhD students end up getting jobs specifically in research. In Canada, where the overflow of PhD degree holders is not as severe, 80% of postdoctoral research fellows earn less than or equal to the average construction worker during their postdoctoral research tenure. Only in the fastest developing countries is there a shortage of PhDs. Higher education systems often offer little incentive to move students through PhD programs quickly, and may even provide incentive to slow them down. To counter this, the United States introduced the Doctor of Arts degree in 1970 with seed money from the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. The aim of the Doctor of Arts degree was to shorten the time needed to complete the degree by focusing on pedagogy over research. Although the Doctor of Arts still contains a significant research component, Germany is one of the few nations engaging these issues, and it has been doing so by reconceptualizing Ph.D. programs to be training for careers outside academia, but still at high-level positions. This development can be seen in the extensive number of Ph.D. holders, typically from the field of law, engineering and economics, at the very top corporate and administrative positions. To a lesser extent, the UK research councils have tackled the issue by introducing, since 1992, the ENGD. Mark C. Taylor opines that total reform of Ph.D programs in almost every field is necessary in the U.S., and that pressure to make the necessary changes will need to come from many sources. These issues and others are discussed in an April 2011 issue of the journal Nature. Within the research occupations in which a Ph.D. is widely viewed as being necessary, Career progression is typically aided by publication in peer-reviewed journals, yet many such journals print research papers without any reference to academic certificates in their author by lines. The quality of a peer-reviewed publication is expected to be self-evident, and letters after authors' names are therefore superfluous. In contrast, applicants for research grants may be required to disclose which academic certificates they hold, leading to the risk that a Ph.D. qualification representing as little as three years' work will outweigh a rival applicant's superior publication record and thus leave academic reviewers open to accusations of self-interest. Given the need for self-evident quality in research publications, the role played by Ph.D. Degrees in research occupations differs markedly from the quality assurance role played by professional qualifications in other fields.
National variations in German-speaking nations, most Eastern European nations, successor states of the former Soviet Union, most parts of Africa, Asia, and many Spanish-speaking countries. The corresponding degree to a doctor of philosophy is simply called doctor, and the subject area is distinguished by a Latin suffix.